I work with both paintings and sculptures to create an immersive composition or a scene from both experience and Im imagination. The project took inspiration from the Russian philosopher Mikhail Bakhtin's carnivalesque theory, where the grotesque and mockery were to challenge the social hierarchy. Quote, the unofficial carnival is people's second life, organized on the basis of laughter. I'm compelled by the word unofficial. Modern carnivals are all organized top down, typically on a yearly basis. What if the carnival is established as a mainstream activity? With my Tibetan Buddhist background, I feel comfortable with the colorful and performative religious rituals and the various devil looking deities. I found them very much the carnivalesque aesthetic. The project aims to bridge the carnival with the religion and draw inspiration from my own religious and the festival experience. Backing pairs the higher class with the head and the lower class with the buttock or the genital. His graphic interpretation led me to use Fat Man, the, personifica the personification of carnival, and his body as the starting point. Therefore, I looked at different ways to elevate the Fat Man as a god. Taking traits of fat gods from different cultures, I enlarged the mouth and the belly, adding feeding tubes to facilitate the fat man's eating habit and the shrunken feet to suggest his lack of movement, creating a character familiar yet monstrous. My, my fat man is larger than human in size. I, I used fragmented paper to allow reconstructions and later expansions. I constantly used the rounded marks and smudges to suggest the fat man's layered fat. During my research, I was caught between the words carnival and cannibal. Their linguistic similarity led me to draw a connection between the two words. Carnival can be understood as no meat. I wrapped the feeding tubes around the fat man's body. The absence of food suggests the possibility of self-cannibalism as a getaway from no meat. Stories of saints offering their own bodies to others are known in any culture, such as the Christian Eucharist, and Buddha sacrificing himself to a hungry tiger in his past life. Cannibalism is then given the, con the connotation of mercy. This utopic aspects of cannibalism led me to use the vibrant and warm color palette throughout the project. Looking at artists such as the Dana Schrutz and Charlie Bellingham, Schrutz's self-eater used the cartoonish style and color to mask the character's abnormal behavior. Bellingham's pastel palette and fluid brush marks pulled the well-known character of the George of George the Fourth from satirical to decorative. Because self-eating required folding one's own body to feed into the mouth, just like the rotational gesture taken by the Ouroboros, I began drawing the parallel between self-eating and the cyclical trait of modern carnival uh, festivals. This digital drawing showing the dissolving fat man exiting a cardboard, cardboard box represents the transition from the off-season to the carnival season. I also created a series of the fat man based on the same list of car characteristics to suggest the repetition of, car the, of carnival. And this stop motion video to imitate how the fat man reorganized himself proceeding to the carnival and then dissolved in a yearly basis. I took folding cardboard boxes as a sign of the end of carnival and experimented with the folding structure to accentuate the physical bending. Then I took the folding further using the beehive to allow horizontal rotation of the different layers of the box, like a Rubik's cube. Researching through the Japanese Buddhist altar, which used the cabinet to shield the display from outside gaze, and the sculpture ascension in Walshingham, I got interested in the barrier between the visible and the invisible, the spiritual and the material. Following my dissertation research on medieval Japanese funeral rituals, I was attracted by the idea that relics are the saint's second life. My research also gave the, gave the requirements for judging the suitability of the bones of the deceased to become relics. In words, the bones should be pure white and rid of all blood, tissues, and moisture. To balance between the ideal relic and the plumpness of the fat man, I cast the bones with wax to get the perfect, the perfect whiteness and dryness. 
and made the plants with plaster and pink silicon rubber to resemble the melting fat. I also scrunched up the orange organza to suggest the layered fat and played it with the relic placement. Installing is a big part of my practice. Pulling the Buddhist cabinet outer, I placed my sculptures inside the showcase, showing the following the traditional display of archaeological finds, and I used the clear glass divider to both focus the spectacle and distance the viewers from the display. I placed the fat man drawing on the floor for visitors to circle around and look for the correct viewing point, all of which to make the fat man not readily available in front of the eyes. I looked at how artists Issa Van Leer and Terence Cole used the small entryway to create intimate and exclusive access inside their works. Visitors are required to crawl down to access Issa Van Leer's Temple of Spring. Terence Cole's Bee Chapel asks visitors to use the steps and pop one's head inside the hive. Artist Flaminia Varanasi's shell structure also requires the audience to walk inside and use the overwhelming pink to give the embodied experience. At present, the project is resolved into a site-specific temple of the fat man in the photocopier room, with the relics and plants as the centerpieces. The many castings of the figure can be read as the discarded fat man's from the past carnivals. The photocopier room is located at the far end of the whole degree show space. I consider the journey to the temple as part of my work because I see so many posters all around the city during Edinburgh festivals and they seem to be the only evidence remaining after the show is over. I stick posters on the walls to lead the way and to build up the carnival atmosphere. I also treat the, I also treat the journey to the temple as a pilgrimage route as I carefully carried the fat man's relics upstairs, mimicking the religious parade. I want to raise awareness about the journey taken by the audience, hence place the fat man murals directly on the main, en main staircase. The canvas are not fixed to the floor. Audience can make delicate moves and feel the fabric sliding off their feet. This chosen room gave a naturally narrow path and a small doorway. I further narrowed it down with wall murals and draped the fabrics onto the floor. I hung painted carpets at the door, firstly, first to frame the entrance even smaller, secondly to create the barrier between the interior and the exterior, and finally transforming the door into an open mouth. Artist Monster Chitwind has previously remade the Anglo-Saxon motif Mouse of the Hell into large sculpture form. Their tube shapes allows peeking through the mouse. I expanded my open mouth entrance in all directions following the Mouse of Hell in the manuscript The Hours of Catherine of Cleves, which has the smaller mouse inside the outer gaping mouse and the outer mouth stretch out, almost like it is still in action, inhaling. Audiences are invited to enter the temple, but are required to take the bigger step or even bow down due to the reduced entrance. Inside the temple, the space is further distanced from the outside with the overwhelming orange light. It is an immersive experience to enter the temple of the fat man from the journey taken by the audience, the gesture to cross the doorway, and finally, the dominant orange and curvy shapes.